the day. Um, I'm Gabriel Bass. I'm sorry for being a little late. I had to wait on something to get started today, but we've still got enough time to code maybe three breaches, which is probably what we would have done anyway, um, because I have a hard stop at the top of the hour. Um, so let's get started. So, oh, I need to switch the video. Okay, so I didn't flip the video in this one. But I flipped it in this one so that it actually looks like what I'm looking at when I'm looking over at the screen over here. And now I realize that is kind of um, uh, a little backwards. And so let me see, can I flip this? What do I need to do to flip the video here? Transform, uh, flip horizontally. And then now if I switch over here, uh, still, Oh, video capture, oh, here we are. This is what I need to transform and flip horizontally. So flip horizontally, there. Now I'm looking in the actual direction that I'm looking when I'm actually looking. So, okay, and get back over here and we'll get things going. Ransomware at a hospital, uh, Provides notice of data privacy event, could be anything, and then three random assignments. Let's do the random assignments and then we can come back for these two. And it does look like the assignment script is, um, I think what it's doing is it's assigning to multiple people, but when it does the assignment, it cancels the assignment for the other person. And so the duplicate assignment issue is coming up and causing, because I should have seven here, not five. So, okay, we'll open up this one and see what it is. Directory displays personal information after update. <laughs> Someone was being helpful. <laughs> it comes with addresses, with uh, directions. Okay. Students' cell phone numbers, personal addresses, and emails are available by default through NIU's directory after an update last week. NIU updates update its online directory, making information only available to those with the university login, but revealing personal information behind the wall. The older version of the directory did not have an authentication barrier, but students' emails was the only accessible information. Students can hide their personal information. CIO said the information was available in the directory before the update, but few people authenticated or logged in. When they were searching, most people... Okay, so this isn't really a breach. Um, this is wholly intentional. People with these concerns would have been brought up sooner. We see we'll be changing the directory to hide the information by default by the end of the month. So... But this is not a breach. This is a choice of how much to disclose. And you had to be authenticated within an authenticated user to see it either way. Um, this one is going, I'm going to mark it as not applicable. Uh, or false positive, whatever the tag is over here for it. Won't fix your body, blah, 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 schema. No, 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 the disclosure was intentional and only to authenticated users. So unassign me because I don't need to be assigned and close and comment. Yep. Yeah, and this is, the, the sad thing is like, John from a, um, you know, being off to a good start standpoint, like I don't get cat. I don't get like credit unless I actually count it and enter it into the repo. <laughs> and so when I close them, it doesn't count against my quota. Um, so Ashbury Park, small business. Oh, oh, no, whatever that was. Let's nope out of that pretty quickly. Oh, come on. <sighs> okay, Ashley Park residents. The only watch is their company's online business unraveled just days before the big holiday shopping event of the year. And a par parent hacker rerouted the website of their small business epoch train post to a porn site. The <laughs> couple claimed he stole their domain name and faked ownership of the site so digital companies couldn't give it back to them. Uh, he hacked emails, cracked two-step verification process, 
meant to protect accounts and took over their presence on Instagram, Etsy. Wow. Um, scared every day. We cry every day. It is our business. This is what we built the ground. Business needs to be worried. Right. So what did they lose? Um, in the end, change the name of their business and restart their online presence from scratch. Ow. That's an impact. So I'm like cutting boards, coasters, and pat passport covers that feature uh, General Lazarus photographs on ceramic, stainless steel, and glass. Problem began, they say, after they hired a web developer in October to help them switch their website to a new hosting service. They used an outsourced site, Upwork.com, and interviewed 10 freelancers and hired one based in India who had a high approval rating on the site. They agreed to pay the developer $1,700 to build a new site ready to go live November 19th, but after missing deadlines, forced to cancel the deal in frustration so they could unveil the website November 19th in time for Black Friday. The cancellation made in accordance with the terms was made after a thousand was paid to the developer for the developer's work to the point nothing was being completed. They turned on the new site, but it didn't last long. It was live for two hours until they started taking until he started taking everything away. The developer used the computer access granted to him uh, to change the website settings. Um, he made he even changed the site's virtual address to make it appear to be based in Nigeria. The Google search for US consumers would never find it. He did so much malicious activity to the company. He complained to Upwork. Eventually, the freelancer development was removed from the site, and Upwork customer service representatives wrote an email where Jenna shared the press shared with press on your side. The company also unsuccessfully asked the developer to let the couple back into their account, according to Upwork. In a statement to press on your side, Upwork confirmed the freelancer was suspended for actions in violation of terms of service. This is a weird one. Um, let's see. While we are not able to discuss a specific case, we can share that there was a resolution. <laughs> After the website was hacked, without a police report, where it was listed incidents of harassment and theft, Companies' Facebook, Instagram, and domain accounts were affected. So he had access to their Facebook, Instagram, and domain accounts, but hacked into their business email. Um, so they probably use maybe the same. Um, yeah, I think I wonder if they use the same credentials for both. You know, which would still be use of stolen credentials. Like the first part of the website is misuse, but then I think some of these other accesses are use of stolen credentials or other. We may just go with hacking unknown um, because it's not completely clear how he did it. Um, but it, you know, it was certainly a manual process. A couple contact Instagram and GoDaddy, the hosted company, because he probably definitely had their DNS. Spent countless hours after regaining control of the accounts. They were unable to. Sh they were able to shut down the Etsy account and start a new Facebook page. They also changed the bank card numbers. Uh, contacted Instagram and GoDaddy, uh, but those efforts were unsuccessful. The pop-up market. Oh, man, I gotta remember not to click anything on this site. Um, so how do you protect yourselves? I mean, if you give away your credentials. Is it basically like the bad guy is sitting there with his own keyboard and mouse in your system? He may have been. Did you run anything he sent you? No. Um, okay. So let's see what we can do with this. So this is dated. This was happening in November of. Looks like November of 18. So 2018. Confirmed. This is super incident. Okay, reference. What's this summary. Um, contractor employed to update website. Uh, reroutes DNS and hijacks all associated accounts after being fired. Confidence, like this is high. Timeline, 
So we said 2018, we'll say November 2018. Compromise, it's not really clear. I mean, we know we're dealing with, we don't know if we're dealing with seconds, minutes, hours, or days, or weeks, right? Like there's really nothing timeline-wise in here. Uh, most of it, so actually I'm gonna go back and mark the confidence. Um, as low because we like there's just not a lot of details payment unknown the victim id is two uh what was the name of the company epoch trading post at least we know a little bit about what they do uh, it's just like the two of them in industry. They're going to be retail, um, decorations, really, right? Uh, manufacturing, other general merchandise, department stores, bookstores, sewing, hobby, luggage, jewelry, shoes, clothing, uh, house, gasoline, Food, optical goods, pharmacies, beer, wine, confectionaries, fish, <laughs> feed stores, supermarkets, other building materials, paint and wallpaper, building materials, computer and software, floor furniture, other home furnishings, window treatments, all other home furnishing stores. Um, it's in 442, not furniture. Okay, I'm going to go with that. Locations affected one in the United States and in um, North America, uh, US, uh, and then where was the, where's this park? Um, Ashbury Park. I don't know where Ashbury Park is. Um, okay. Huh. Let's find out where Ashbury Park is. <laughs> Apparently it's wherever. Uh, New Jersey is most likely. Is there anything in here? Yep, New Jersey, there we go. So, actions hacking so i think there's definitely a hacking unknown uh, i think it's also obviously he used well we don't know he, we really don't know vector all through um web interfaces to stuff that was used to infiltrate um malware uh, we, we don't know that he used malware. Certainly there was misuse, um, knowledge abuse, privilege abuse. He had access to these systems, but he also had knowledge of their passwords. Um, and so I, th I would say that both of these uh, remote access used to infiltrate and change things. Um, so... That's what we're gonna do. Actor, external, well, no. This is gonna be the rare partner. Um, and this is gonna be grudge or personal offense. He didn't like to be fired. Um, his industry is gonna be professional services. Um, let's see, web development mix. Uh, and supporting code 541511. We'll double check that. 541. Then uh, down here, I guess. 541511. Customer computer programming services. Fair enough. Uh, location, I think they said India. Region, India is uh, 
West Asia, I'm pretty sure. No, it's uh, South, Southeast Asia, I think. Uh, let's double check that. India is Southeast Asia. No, it's South Asia, apparently. That looks like India. It's Southeast Asia. Oh, okay. So South, what's South Asia? Do we have the code? Uh, 142 and then 034. Okay. This is one where we actually know, you don't, you don't have a lot of partner because rarely is it the partner attacking because they have instead of asset, um, it's unknown. Uh, what was compromised? Certainly web applications, multiple. Um, the DNS server was compromised. Um, I think that's probably covers it. This is all cloud-based, I think. They didn't own any of their own assets. It's IT, um, mostly United States-based, I think. And oh, and that was one of the other things I need to sign into. I'm not used to it yet because it's not part of my normal process, but I do need to get signed in. Um, so the this one, the impact's going to be catastrophic. They had to restart the business. Um, yeah, I think they, they had to restart the business. Really no development chain because this was from misuse. Discovery method, internal, um, uh, see, reported by employee, which was owners, but still. Uh, targeted, this was very targeted. So impact was catastrophic. They lost the business. Uh, plus, this was a random assignment. I'm not gonna fill event chain out uh, because we really don't know anything about it, right? We don't know anything about the sequence of steps. We just know that a lot of things happen. And so anything we put in there would kind of bias the, the data from a length or a action type standpoint. So, Mark this is validated and save this out. And while it's a weird one that there's a lot of things we don't know, it's interesting in that it lets us, and it does let us code that one thing that we haven't known before. So I'm gonna move this over here. This is our bit discovery page where we can um, use it to look up domains and websites to figure out one, if it's cloud hosted and two, what country it's in. So we'll close this one, we've got it done. Come back over here, we got time for maybe two more. Please warn a skimming device on gas pumps. As we've seen, these still occur, but instead of being reported by national um, services, they're now reported mostly by uh, local, please. Uh, the text, our warning, public or fraudulent card skimmers found at local gas stations. Uh, two, two, two. This one happened, see this is 2017. This is not in the last year. So December, 2017, we go into 2019 corpus. Um, the GitHub number is 10655. And our reference is here. It says, said they found one skimming device at this location. Summary, skimmer found uh, at gas station. And inside, okay, uh, comforting. I mean, these are pretty cut and dry. Timeline, uh, just say when they found it, just at the Brush Creek Market. Uh, okay, December 12th, 2017. I'm gonna put that in here. Uh, December 12th, double check it. Compromise is, we don't know, well, we know skimmers take seconds. Uh, right, because under a minute put in, or under two minutes to put in. Exfiltration, we don't know how long it was there. Discovery, we don't know. Containment, 
Uh, we don't know. Not a lot of timeline information in this one. The victim is Brushy Creek Market in where? Austin, Texas. So what do we know about Brushy Creek Market in Austin, Texas? It's a farmer's market. Are you sure this was on a gas pump again? Uh, do I say? Beware at the field pump. I mean, they keep saying field pumps, so I'll take their word for it. I'm going to say that this is small, but very unlikely to know exactly how many Brushy Creek Market says it's a farmer's market. Uh, This farmer's market is not a uh, Nixon. Uh, trail. So 445, I think, is appropriate uh, since that's what markets go under. One location in the United States, in North America, and Texas. <laughs> uh, see, in Austin is probably being used ironically. I, I don't know. I so I've always heard about Austin, but I've never been to Austin. Like I always make this assumption that it's kind of like, you know, um, West End in Nashville, uh, which is a very kind of, say, trendy. Uh, Area as well as you know the east side of Nashville has a similar vibe but I've never been yeah it would probably be a cool place to visit I've we almost went down there for some healthcare stuff but ended up going to Boston instead but it would be a fun place to go visit though I'm like you know I'm not um I think I'm getting too old to be uh trendy in any way like you know, I'm just the sit back and my, like, I like unique food, but I'm not, don't need things that are fancy. Um, I like kind of boring things. So I'm not sure how my, like, how much would it interest me? Like I, my ideal vacation is to sit down in a um, winery like Kerman, Missouri, where they've got a bunch of vineyards, sit down there, get a glass of wine and just read. When I get bored reading, sit down and, um, you know, go sit down in a hot tub and relax a bit and watch some TV and then go back to reading a little bit later. <laughs> uh, that's kind of my definition, but I've got kids. And so like just anything slow is the definition of vacation. So physical skimmer. Um, it sounds like public. Well, I mean, if it's on a gas pup it has to be victim uh public grounds um this was used to exfiltrate data really that's the only action the actor external um organized and we, we've talked about this this is really more organized as a criminal not as a vertically integrated criminal gang but you if you're going to use a um gas uh pump uh uh, system, then you kind of have to have that. Um, okay. Like you, you have to have a skimmer that matches the gas pump. And so you have to have done some planning and some of these groups are vertically integrated. So this is financially motivated, uh, country. Uh, we do not know the country and a lot of times these are external. And so definitely want to skip that asset. We know about one. Terminal, gas terminal. Uh, not applicable. This is not really an on-prem versus cloud discussion for this terminal. Um, the discussions we've had is that the gas pump itself is OT, but the payment card system is IT. Um, and that was in the US. And so the attribute compromised, confidentiality, uh, potentially because we really don't know, and it would have been card information, payment information. We don't know the amount, but it would have been customer data um, processed. 
they abused a known, they didn't catch, and they don't have reports of the data. Partner data, no. Discovery method, uh, do, do they say, it says police discovered. No, TDA, Texas Department of Agriculture. Okay, so it was external, it was, um, and we'll go with audit for lack of a better term, but the Department of Agriculture looking at it, um, found it targeted, very opportunistic, because that's just where they can make money. Value chain, this is one we've talked about before, where um, other, let's call it skimmer, they would have had to build a, develop a physical skimmer that fit. We don't know about distribution services. This is one where I really wish breach records would capture more of. Targeting um, organizational information. So let's see. Um, this is uh, like gas terminal type. So they were targeted because of the gas terminal they had skimmers for distribution. Uh, again, it's going to be physical, so other. Cash out because they're stealing money. Um, credit cards. They can't directly steal the money. They have to buy something with the credit cards. Though I guess you could sell the credit card numbers. So, But it'll ultimately end up probably being sell, th sale of stolen goods. And we don't know about money laundering. The impact, uh, insignificant. The gas company, who's the one who is compromised, uh, didn't pay anything around this. So random assignment. This one, we do have a chain. Um, this was a physical attack by a external actor on a terminal asset, compromising potentially confidentiality. And we can mark it validated. I've got just enough time to do one more, and then I can break for my next meeting. So uh, terminal, return, and we'll make sure to close this one because I have a bad habit of not doing that. And then we'll do one of, we've looked at these three, we'll do one of these, we'll do the first one. Uh, this should go pretty quick because these are pretty common. Uh, okay. Minnesota healthcare facility specializing in treatment for the face, teeth, mouth, and jaw has been hit by a ransomware attack. Minnesota oral and moxia fa facial. Okay. I'm going to look that word up. I know, is this a word that y'all know? Uh, is not one I've heard before. Related to or treatment of moxia in the facial, in the face. So what is moxia? Uh, the jaw or jaw bones, specifically the upper jaw and most vertebrates. The human also forms part of the nose and eye socket, so I guess. Huh. Did not know that. Okay. Struck a server used by the organization. I staff were able to intervene to restore the impacted data. No mention made was made as to the amount of money or whether the ransom was paid. So if they were able to restore data that well, it kind of implies that um, either this was a cloud service or they just paid it. All 80,000 patients are being informed. It resulted in inadvertent exposure of patient information. Statement, although this time there's no evidence that patient information was actually accessed or viewed, any indication of anyone's information being misused, the practice is taking steps. Hired, discovered, hired by to discover what, if any, information has been accessed. We're unable to give a definitive answer. The, impact, the impacted server, the investigation, was unable to determine if the patient's x-rays identify activity surrounding the information, potentially impacted patients. So we don't know how they got in in this case. Um, not been impacted, reviewed the current cybersecurity practice, come in, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're gonna we're missing some action information here. We don't know how the attackers actually got in, unfortunately. So we'll have a action unknown at the beginning of this. And when did this happen? September twenty third, twenty nineteen. 
that will go in the 2020 report. Uh, this myself, and we'll put the reference in here. And somewhere at healthcare facility. Oh, yes. No, I know I haven't filled in things. Thank you, though. Uh, fact checker. Uh, SEMA checker. Uh, it's pretty... Uh, I'm gonna put medium confidence because we've got that one action that we didn't know about. Um, incident happened in 2019, September 23rd. Compromise. Um, I wish they would talk about. They don't talk about exactly how long it took any of the information. They had it assessed, but there's absolutely no information about how long it took to get in. And we don't know how they got in. Um, there's no, because they don't disclose any exfiltration, we won't mark it. Um, discovery unknown, um, containment unknown. I, it's able to intervene immediately, but what does immediately mean? I don't know, at some point we may have to say it so we can select multiple of these so that you know we have something because we know immediate is less than a day so it's minutes or hours but we don't know which you know um i want to say hours this will put us in the same ballpark for analysis purposes containment um we don't know how long but that could have been days um so victim is oral and it's this, C moms apparently. Southeastern Minnesota oral and maxillofacial surgery. I wonder why they don't use that name everywhere. Uh, number of employees. Uh, it's worth a shot. Well, we'll try Twitter, or uh, Twitter. We'll try uh, LinkedIn. Um, eleven results. So I'm gonna say ten to hundred here, because eleven results kind of makes me think that that's the range. That'll put them as a small business. Um, dentist. I'm gonna say that dentist is likely, and it's really a dental surgeon, but I mean, I guess that falls after dentist as well. We'll go with that. One location affected in the United States, uh, North America, and <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I imagine we have to be like, so there's always like the background noise comes to, so I'm wondering how many SEO stats get mucked up when coding these. Like there's kind of like the internet, I call it the internet background radiation. It's just the stuff that just kind of randomly hits everything. Um, and so any signal has to rise above that. So if you've got like a honeypot, like every port on every IP you have is going to be touched by something, you know? And so, and there's also kind of the internet background radiation of attacks where, you know, just random attacks on obvious stuff will be tried against everything just in case it works. Because, you know, if you've got a computer, you might as well get it, have it doing something, even if you're an attacker. And so I suspect that all of our access falls well below the the um, the internet background radiation uh, signal to noise threshold. So, let's see, what where was this located? Minnesota. So, amen. And then the secondary that victim and so actions we have an unknown action used to infiltrate undisclosed they may not know it though and, and this is one really a missing area because a lot of times in ransomware attacks we get the ransomware but we don't know a lot of times did it come in with a known email was it an attacker who had you know gotten malware in and one or more ways through buying credentials or something and dropped a access. Um, we, we just don't know. 
but we do know that that was followed by malware. Uh, ransomware, uh, unknown how it was installed, and it's not used for any of those. Um, And so we've got the actor is going to be financially motivated. It's gonna be organized. And really, I you know, I think that you could almost, it'd be interesting to go back because I think certain attacks happen at a certain, like when you get to the verbosity of ransomware we're seeing, I'll bet that it is un, that it's not possible to execute the amount of ransomware we're seeing, like just from a sample perspective because we're sampling, and so we're obviously not seeing all of it, but it still comes up so much that I'll bet that you could simply say, look, there has to be a lot of really good organized processes to even have it come up that much. And really, any type of incident that comes up that often um, likely implicitly means that it is being executed using structured, repeatable processes. Uh, opportunistic, discovery method, Sounds like internal, um, but it's unclear what triggered it. Um, value chain, there's certainly development. I think ransomware is specifically under here. Non-distribution services, we don't know. Targeting, we don't know how they were targeted um, because we don't know how they were infiltrated. Distribution, again, we don't know. It could have been directly installed. It could have been by email. It was on a server, so um, we don't know how the initial distribution happened. They probably directly uploaded it after. Cash out would be cryptocurrency for ransomware. Money laundering is unknown, though we would assume cryptocurrency tumbling uh, if we had more details. Impact, um, insignificant. They had it cleaned up quickly. They just Well, I'll put distracting because they had to notify people. Uh, well, no, I mean, notification doesn't qualify. That doesn't, didn't pull anyone away from anything. Insignificant is fine. Uh, okay. Plus, this was a PHIDBR assignment. The action was an unknown action by an external actor on a uh, unknown asset for initially compromised confidentiality. And then the second one, and we skipped asset, didn't we? Prevalence of ransomware within exploit kits over time. Yeah, that would be an interesting thing to study, to look at the prevalence of ransomware within exploit kits. I just read a piece about kind of the evolution of Tricky, uh, I think it was TrickBot, TrickyBot, um, and how, you know, tooling has improved for it and how it's uh, been commoditized. So it's kind of like the whole Wardley map thing of malware. So... Um, which I, I think would be a really beneficial study to go study what are the worldly maps of the attackers. And instead of looking for ways that they can make things more efficient, which is what businesses normally do with the worldly map, look at places where you can make them less efficient and move them backwards as ways to decrease uh, attacks. So, okay, action. We know that the unknown actions were followed by a malware by an external actor on one server compromising availability. Go back up here and code asset one server of unknown type. Um, it may have been like an imaging server or something. It sounded on prim. It's IT. I'll put it in the United States. So we've got that coded. Uh, okay, got this, and then we mark this validate, and we'll save it out. Okay. And I don't have enough time to really do another one. So sorry for starting the stream late and ending it early. Um, I have another meeting to go to. And so we'll put it off and I will be back um, on Thursday. Um, hey, John, what would like, what would be the impact to you if I started streaming at like, you know, two o'clock Eastern or one o'clock Central, something like that? Um, it works a little better for me because it gives me a bigger block to do analysis in the mornings. Um, and I turn to like right after lunch, like I have so much trouble getting motivated to do things, but if I'm talking or having a meeting, I do better. Um, but you know, if it's going to keep people from being able to see it, I don't want to switch. I like having people here to chat with. 
So from your perspective, like, would you be able to make it at one or two in the afternoon or you think, um, okay, yeah, I, I doubt I'll do it on Friday. So I might try switch it up and see how that works. So other than that, thank you all for coming by and I will see you, um, say next Tuesday. See y'all later. Oh no, no Thursday. Excuse me. See you Thursday. <laughs> bye bye.